Well, officially welcome to Chapter 4. Um, we've got a crazy set of weeks at school. Um, what I want you to do is just focus on this first section with me today and tomorrow because our seniors will be gone Wednesday. Today and tomorrow we'll talk through what a worksheet is. Um, if you have it in front of you, either the Nanduri one, the big one, or the transparency pieces of the book, that's what a worksheet looks like, looks like, and I'll talk about the components today. Next week, then, we'll wrap up with the rest of the sections. Okay, so if you didn't quite get all of your notes taken, that would be something you could do over your long weekend, amidst being busy and competing at the state level of tournaments and all that sort of stuff. What is a worksheet? Well, what you, the biggest thing that you need to know is that it is not part of the permanent accounting records, Rather, it's a tool that the accountant uses. You wouldn't publicly share with external folks like customers or um, vendors your worksheet. Rather, it's a tool to build all of your formal stuff. So you use it as a tool to build better financial statements, things like balance sheets, accounting, uh, income statements, and owner's equity. It is optional. I would say a lot of people do use a worksheet, though, simply to work through their work. What you need to know is that there are five steps in creating a worksheet, and they actually have headings that kind of tell you the five steps. Speaking of the five steps, here they are. This would be the supplemental handout that I gave you. There's a trial balance, an adjustment section, an adjusted trial balance. Sounds a lot like last chapter, doesn't it? And then from there, we either build an income statement or a balance sheet. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. In step five, it really combines... Oh these two things to gather if we had a net income or net loss. So step five is figuring out, well, did we have a net income or net loss? It's a, it's a snapshot holistically of how our business is doing because we see our debits equaling our credits, but then we have our adjustments or we record what we use, and then we update the trial balance to be more of a end of fiscal period, debit equal credit, and then we roll them to their appropriate places. Um, balance sheet stuff would go on the balance sheet column, income statement stuff would go on the income statement column. I'm glad that the book spreads it out over a double page because it's even then it's really time consuming and almost gives you a dizzy approach to things because it's all line by line, and I'll give you some tips when we do that together. But remember, this is a tool. It's an optional thing that accountants use to build better financial statements. Before we go into, well, actually, no, I knew this is what's next. Can you go to the funny section of your book after page 163? Basically, as I talk about the steps, you will lay these transparency sheets over the page after 163, and I'll talk you through step by step the five. So that first page without a transparency is this step. It's the step to prepare the trial balance. Where would you get this information from? Where would it come from? Well, two places. Remember the general ledger has all the little mini camps that we roll into creating a trial balance and basically you just pull from the trial balance and throw it into the trial balance column of this worksheet. So this is simply moving numbers from one spot to the next. You'll notice the single and the double rule in there. Step two, flip that little page over. And that is simply, okay, now let's take a look at our adjusting entries that we did and throw them in there. 
Remember all these adjusting entries that we learned about last chapter? Then we transfer them into this adjustment column. What do you think the A and the A and the B and the B and the C and the C mean and on down the list? It's basically, if I see A, I can tell that that's supplies. So then I'd find the other A and lo and behold, that's the supplies expense. If I'd find prepaid insurance, which would be B, lo and behold, insurance expense has a B with it. So it's just, it's a way to visualize the partners, if you will. A and A, B and B, C and C, all the way down. They wouldn't be listed as one, two, three, four, five, because I think that would be confusing to add more numbers on a already very heavy number page. You'll notice this bottom section, and I know you're not writing on yours because it's in the book. There's a little bottom section for basically the accounts that go with the adjusting entries. Some of them are up here, but a lot of them just get plugged down here. Add additional accounts as needed. Okay. You'll see how this plays out when we do it together. So then we start with our trial balance. We roll into our adjustment, and then from there, flip to the next page with your transparency. Then we update our trial balance, or have what's called the adjusted trial balance. Is it starting to look like a matrix of numbers here? Yes. And if you put a number in the wrong spot, the rest of it will be off. Now, I want to just focus on supplies a minute. Supplies, of course, is an asset. I know you can't write this down, but you can just visualize here. We start with a $2,500 balance, and it's a debit. In adjustments, we have a $1,500 um, occurrence that's a credit. So would you add the credit? No. We would subtract the credit. I'm going to just do this for a minute. If I write supplies in here, and I have a $2,500 debit and a $1,500 credit, what's actually my balance in supplies? got a $1,000 debit balance here because we're going to mark this up. It's the first thing we're going to do. Where I star in here, these are all the normal balance sites. This, these, this $2,500 debit, notice it's debit all the way across. Okay. When we use or adjust for things, it's oftentimes opposite of its normal balance side, simply because another debit to an asset would have actually increased it. Next up, this is kind of the tricky part. You're extending the balance sheet stuff over to the balance sheet column, and then you're extending your income statement stuff to the income statement column. So if I look, cash, supplies, prepaid insurance, office equipment, those are all assets. I've got a couple payables. I've got my owner's capital and drawing. So all of those, and I'm not going to draw a very straight line, but I'll try. All of those balances are going to get transferred over to the balance sheet column. I wouldn't need to put anything in the income statement right here because those are not income statement accounts. Then down here, I've got revenue, I've got expense, expense, then all these extra ones that I needed, expense, expense, ooh, there's a tricky one in there, there's another, ex all these expenses, okay, they are going to get put right in here because those are income statement accounts, with the exception of which one, this is kind of dirty of them down there, look at here. Accumulated depreciation is actually a contra asset account, isn't it? So if you look at this matrix of numbers, there it seems like I just literally confetti through them on this page, doesn't it? But they all have a place based on what row they're in and what column they're in. Think of it as one giant Excel spreadsheet. I could say C3, and that would be right here. I could, see, I could say A2, 
or sorry, B2 or B1, and that would be right there. You know, so it's one big giant Excel spreadsheet, really. And then that fifth step, that's calculating our net income down here, or net loss. It's my job in the next day and a half to make this seem really easy for you. Yes. Yes. The college kids do this in Excel. I'm going to make you do a pen and paper, though. It's just like riding a bike. I wouldn't throw you on a 10-speed bike if you couldn't ride a tricycle. Yes. So the handwritten version is a good thing. Yes. Ah, I'm glad you brought that up. You actually see how many totals on there. You actually see three, don't you? So I've got, I'm going, I'm cruising down here, and then I see a total. I'm cruising down here, and then I see a total. And then here's the net income or loss with the total. This top section is your basic account. This middle section are the add-on accounts that we needed for the adjusting entries. And this bottom total is like all, like you're done. You don't need that final one until you're down in that corner. When I learned accounting, and even the old book that I used to teach with didn't have this here, it embedded it all up in here, and it was easier to learn from. This book adds this little add-on riffraff section. I like it better up here, but it's not how the book does it. I call this the riffraff section because there's a, there's a lot of... There's a lot of income statement accounts in here, like expense, expense, expense. Ooh, there's AR in there too. Expense pay, oh, a little bit of everything. Okay, I see some expenses, but then I also see a contra asset, another asset, and a couple payables. It's all the add-ons from all the adjusting entries. You do them again. If you're overwhelmed by looking at this, that's normal. This is oftentimes the least favorite thing that students learn about in accounting. Because if a number even gets put in one, you know, if it's moved slightly, things will be off. And there's a lot of points on this, isn't there? To try to figure out if you've made money or lost money, here's the best way to do it. I would add this somewhere to your notes. When you have a net income, the income statement debit column and balance sheet credit column will need a number. When you have a net loss, the income statement credit column and the balance sheet debit column will need a number. And I'm going to go back and visualize this with you. You'll need numbers in those columns. <clears throat> Again, I want to backtrack and show you exactly what I mean by that. The more we do this, the more comfortable you'll feel with it. We're going to do this together tomorrow. And I'm going to send you home over the weekend with some homework for you to practice it on your own. Most of the time, most of the time, the book's going to be running a net income. Okay. Um, I think, though, the first example we do will be a net loss. But most, more often than not, the book's going to give you a net income as the option. So I'm going to go backtrack a minute. I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to get rid of all my extra notes. Let's focus on what I just showed you. Okay. 
So we've done our adjust, we've done our trial balance, we've done our adjusting entries, we've done our adjusted trial balance, and we've brought everything over. And when we get to the bottom here where it says totals, I want you to notice they don't equal. Like I'm down here, 7740 does not equal 10,600. And 22,450 does not equal 19,500. We need our debits to equal our credits. That's the basic foundational rule in accounting. So then what you do is you add a number, or I told you, to get to your net income. Okay, And so if, if I bump ahead, if it's a net income, we need a number in the debit column of the income statement, and we need a number in the credit column of balance sheet, and that's exactly what happened. Sorry, wrong way. That's exactly what happened down here. Because we need our debits to equal our credits. Now let's talk about it from an accounting standpoint instead of number standpoint. Credits on the income statement column, Here's our credit column. Credits are what? What are the credits on the income statement column? Let's think about, you can look. This 10,600 belongs to revenue. So this is revenue. All of these debits on the income statement column stand for expense, 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 expense. And what do we always hope is more? Revenue. Well, is our revenue of 10,600 larger than our expenses? So wouldn't that make sense? When, if we need to get these to equal, if we add the difference, that's net income. Because if I take my 10,600, which I know is my revenue, and all of these expenses, which is 7,740, 10,000 is bigger than 7,000, and the difference, of course, would be net income. Now here's where you hope it all works because down in this little section, and we're gonna, I'm getting a little ahead of our, myself, but I'm wanting to, this is tomorrow. This is what we'll do tomorrow. If I have a debit here, what has to be on the other side? A credit. It's gotta be the same number too, but take a look at how cool this is. This is how when accounting becomes really cool because you better hope that credit of 2860 works out. But let's think about the credit side of the balance sheet. Does the owner get to keep his share of the net income? And owner's capital is a credit balance. So it's where it all works out. And when you're doing your numbers and your numbers work out, whew, this is where I sometimes start to see tears in accounting. And it's okay, I'll cry with you because it's a lot. And then you work through all of this and you get down here and your numbers don't work out, then it's how do you even begin to troubleshoot all of these confetti-based numbers that look like they were just thrown on there. So here's what I wanna do today. I wanna get this and this done for sure. I'm not gonna rush though, because when I get up here and start rushing, that's when I get sloppy. So I hope I can just get these two columns done today. Cool? Then we have all day tomorrow to finish out this worksheet. And then I'll also send you on your merry way with work that you can do at some point over the weekend, because I know you guys have very busy weekends. I want you to feel good about a worksheet before I move on to the other three sections of the chapter. So speaking of that, we're gonna do this big guy. It doesn't have a page number, but it's the half fold. It's probably your first one. It's exercise four one, the Nanduri company. Eventually, we're going to mark this thing up with highlighter marks. But we're not going to do that just yet. Okay. Actually, maybe it would be beneficial. I spoke too soon. 
The first thing I want you to do, and whether that's with a highlighter or a different colored pen, I want us to put down the steps. How many steps are there to creating a worksheet? Do you remember? Five. Step one is to do the trial balance. Did they already do that step for you? They did, those lovelies. Okay. Step two is then to put on the worksheet what you did for the adjusting entries. Oftentimes, you could just go look at your journal for that. In this case, uh, it's, not, it's not set up that way, and we actually have to do the adjusting entries. Step three, then, is to say, okay, trial balance, talk to the adjustments. Did we make changes? And most often, it's a yes. So we need to update our trial balance. Income statement and balance sheets, step four. It's basically taking what's in the trial balance and shoving them to their appropriate homes. And way down here on step five, I don't even know what line that is. What line is this total on? Down under, is it, is it listed as 15 right here? Okay. So down on line 13, 14, and 15, this big section, I don't know if I don't do what I just did, but that's step five. Maybe put it listed below. Step five is to get um, all of your totals and in net income or net loss achieved. And according to this, we're having a net income. So that's exciting. Okay. So those are the steps. Now I do want you to find a highlighter. And be also careful that you don't put it in the wrong spot. This will look like an elementary art project by the time you're done. If accounting and art could come together, this is what it would be. Okay, so at the top, first of all, what line does this total show up on? 10? Okay. This is your standard section, like of the basic accounts. Can you see the divide between income statement and balance sheet here? Where does the divide happen between what two accounts? I see some assets. I see some liabilities, and I see owner's capital. Is that the divide? Tell me, what line is owner's capital on? Six? Is, can I assume service revenue is on seven? Yep, because sometimes it's funny. What I want you to do with your highlighter, I don't have a highlighter up here, but what I want you to do with your highlighter between line six and seven, take and draw a line all the way across. Between line six and seven. Draw an arrow that looks like this. Above the line are all the balance sheet accounts. Below the line are all the income statement accounts. The reason we did that is to help with the adjusting entries because we know we need to have one in balance sheet, one in income statement. And then when it's time to take your trial balance numbers and shove them to the correct homes, you can see where they go easier. Okay. While we're in here, this is a little bit of a, eh, I'll save this for tomorrow. I'll save this part for tomorrow. Um, the other thing I want you to do with a different color marker or a different color pen or just really dark with your, with your pencil, star trial balance, star adjusted trial balance, star income statement, and star balance sheet. Here is what we are going to remember when it comes to those starred columns or set of columns, because each of them have a debit and a credit. The star means normal balance. So assets have a debit balance. Liabilities have a credit balance. Capital has a credit balance. Revenue has a credit balance. Expenses have a debit balance. Okay. So 
if it's in a starred column, it always is going to be placed where the normal balance resides or where it increases. Okay. So how are we feeling so far? Good. Trial balance is done. What I want to get done before you leave in the next 10 minutes is plugging in our adjustments. Okay. You have a lot of space at the bottom of the page, don't you? What I want to do is actually do some T accounts with you so you can see them. And then we'll go place them in their appropriate spots. I don't have a lot of space on mine, so we're going to do this. OK, now go in your books to exercise 4.1. Thank you, page 194. Nanduri Company, do you see how it had the worksheet information there? Basically, that's the trial balance. And they said, basically finish out the worksheet. Other data that we need to know, one, two, and three, those are basically the adjusting entries, okay? So they're saying a physical count reveals $500 of supplies on hand. Is that an adjusting entry? It absolutely is. We aren't going to do the adjusting entry. Rather, we're going to do T accounts or little tools to place it where it needs to go. So do this. We're going to be doing a total of three. So you're, you'll need to make six T accounts. Just only So save room is basically what I'm saying. What is the um, contra account that goes with supplies when it comes to adjusting? Supplies what? Thank you. Okay. Um, supplies, of course, is a balance sheet account. Income statement account belongs to the expense. You normally wouldn't need to do this. Some of you are going to get so good at this that you can just do this by just looking. But since we're new, I'm going to take a step back and slow down. Tell me, by looking at your trial balance, what is the beginning balance or the trial balance? of our supplies. How much did we have? 1880. OK. And what number one or A says? I can't remember if it's one or A. How much do we have left? So what did we use? What's 1880 minus 500? 1380. Am I going to debit 1380 or credit 1380? It's got to be a credit. Because if it was a debit, it would be 1880 plus 1380, and that's not correct. I see a credit somewhere. What has to happen under expense? It's got to be debited. Okay. What we just did here. The debit to supplies expense, the credit to supplies, is what we're going to shove up on that worksheet. But since this is the first one that we're doing, what do you think this is going to be labeled as? A. So now we're going to take what we did here, the debit and the credit and that little A, and we are going to go find those columns. Let's start with the debit first, because we always start with debits first. OK. Find the supplies expense. I'm just going to write on here, just because I don't have nice lines like you do. I'm going to find supplies expense. And I'm going to put that debit of 1380 in the adjustment column. And I'm also going to label it A. Yeah, Ms. Salvi. OK. And as Sydney knows, and I think all of you can agree, the lines are annoying, aren't they? Think of the darker lines as call, um, commas and decimals. Where, where do you typically put the A? Put it out like on the far left side. Does that make sense? Like where the. Like where the millions would go. Does that make sense? Put the A out there just so it doesn't get so jammed together. Now, we had a debit, but we also had a credit. 
you'd go find supplies, you'd list that credit there. So what line are the supplies on? Three. Typically it has a debit balance, but remember what we did here. We, cre we credited it to make it go down, and that's why you see a credit in that column. Now, just how my smart board software is, I, I can't have two shades up at once. I hope you're not getting confused by looking at all these numbers. Just disregard those, okay? So far, so good? Can we do the next one? What's going on in the next adjusting entry? $100 of the unearned revenue is still unearned at the end of the month. So we still owe $100 worth of work. Okay, so let's make our two T accounts. Unearned service revenue. When we do our work, what does it become? Remember this from last chapter? When we turn unearned into, what's it called? Yep, more specifically service revenue, okay? Unearned is a liability which belongs on the balance sheet. So this one has to be income statement and voila, service revenue is. Okay, so what did our unearned service revenue start at? 240? It's a liability, so it's a credit right here. What did it end with according to what the book just said? 100. So what did we actually earn? What's 240 minus 100? 140. I cannot put the 140 on the credit side because then it would turn into 380. Okay. So over here, if I have a debit, this has to be a credit. And sure enough, when I make money, that's what it is. So there's your adjusting entry. This is the second adjusting entry that we, we're going to do. So it, the first one was A, this one needs to be B. We've got some accounting jokesters back there. And then all we're going to do is go place what I circled in the right spots. So I've got a debit. Did I do the math wrong? No, I looked at the wrong one. I've got a debit of 140 to unearned service revenue, and I've got a credit of 140 because I earned my work. I, I did my work and I earned what they prepaid for. It's labeled B because it's the second one in the sequence. Do you have the little riffraff section on there too? Yeah, okay, we'll talk more about the riffraff tomorrow. Let's do the last adjusting entry. The reason I'm going kind of fast on the adjusting entries is that's what we spent the last three weeks doing. So I hope they're coming pretty easy to you. What's our last adjusting entry? Accrued salaries of 210. So salaries and wages payable. They happened, we just haven't paid them. That's what accrued means. Okay. And what's the contra account? Salaries and wages, what? Thank you. Uh, the payable, of course, belongs on the balance sheet. The expense belongs on the income statement. The reason I'm reminding you of that is it helps you, oh boy, it helps you place them. Let's just stop right there because then we can just pick up right where we left off and it will be a nice review tomorrow. So pack up all of your large amounts of stuff.